Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now when I made my video about Windows Subsystem for Linux, it dealt with command line programs. But of course that left the question, how do you run graphical user interfaces from WSL through to your Windows desktop? And that's the question I want to answer today in this video. And along the way, we're also gonna look at how you can send a program to display from a Raspberry Pi onto another Raspberry Pi and have a graphical user interface program be sent from running on one Raspberry Pi through to your Windows desktop. So, if you wanna find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, so the foundation of windowing systems on Linux and Unix type operating systems is this thing called the X windowing system. And it's basically a network protocol and a set of libraries and a set of standards that allow a program to do graphical things across a network. And that went through various revisions until you finally end up with version 11, which we call X11. And that's been around since the kind of the mid late 1980s. Now X11, allows you to run a program on one computer and rather than having it displayed on the monitor attached to that computer it can be displayed on another workstation another terminal across a network and this comes back from the days when you had kind of mainframe computing or mini computing where what basically the programs would run with lots and lots of users 10 20 30 40 hundreds of users all connected to a big computer and then each person would have their own terminal their own workstation that they could display Display programs on that uh, terminal it didn't have to have very much computing power it didn't have to have a disk didn't have to have much memory it just had to be a way of being able to display the graphics that are being sent across the network and that still works today when you boot up a Linux machine when you boot up a Raspberry Pi at the very heart is still this x11 protocol and that means we can use that to display different programs across the network and onto a different computer before we get into that though, it's worth just having a, an interesting thing about the philosophy behind this and a kind of the history of computer science. If you remember way back, this is kind of like so we're dealing with the 70s and the 80s, you've got this idea of kind of client server. So everything happened on a big server and you had a kind of a weaker client that was able to display things from them. Then we've got the era of the PC, the personal computer, where everything was local to me. And of course that gave me you know, gaming as well faster user interfaces because I had access to the local hardware, including the GPU. And of course, now we've gone full cycle again today. We're streaming videos, we're streaming 4K films from Netflix and Amazon or whatever service you're using. And now, of course, we're dealing with streaming of gaming. So the GPU isn't even in my local device anymore. It's over on some big computer and then it's streamed over to me. So just as a note for those who are interested in computer science from a historical point of view, things do tend to go around in cycles. An idea, an architecture, a system that's been used in the past will again come to the forefront. Of course, it will be different, it will be improved, it will have different ideas, but basically here we are again now coming back to this idea of streaming things over a network to display graphics, 4K video, even games, on a weaker, dumber terminal where all you need is an input control, a keyboard or joystick or key pad, whatever you're using, and then actually the hard work is done somewhere else. So we're gonna use that very idea now in actually displaying programs from a Windows Subsystem for Linux and also from a Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's go and do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to display a window from one Raspberry Pi on another Raspberry Pi. And why we're doing that is because, well, first of all, it's useful, but also because, of course, this is running Linux. It's got all of that X stuff, all that X11, all the libraries, all the networking, all that all built in. You don't have to add anything at all. It comes all for free. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you that uh, the IP address of this Raspberry Pi, so you can see that I'm connecting to one board. So here it is, 192.168.1.44. And before we connect to the other Raspberry Pi, we are just going to disable um, authentication for what windows, what device are allowed to display windows on this Pi. It just makes life really easy. Clients can connect from any host. Now, in a home network in your house, this isn't gonna be an issue. In a workplace, it would be more of an issue. And obviously, 
anything that's got public accessibility to it would be a real issue. But here, in my private LAN, this isn't an issue. So it just makes this demo a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna secure Shell over to a different Raspberry Pi that's here on my network, 168.1.11. Okay, type in the password. No, it's not secret or password or 1234 or anything like that. Okay, so now I'm on a different machine. So again, if I do IP, well, you know I've just connected to it, but if I do IP uh, address show, we can see here that it is in fact 192.168.1.11, as I just said. So what I'm gonna do now, there's two ways we can do this. The first way is we're gonna set what's called the display variables. So what you do is you say display, okay, that's a variable that you set, is equal to 192.168.1.44, that's the Raspberry Pi we have connected from, that's the one with this desktop, is okay? And we have to do colon one because I'm running here on VNC. So VNC is technically not the physical monitor, it's a virtual monitor. So the physical monitor would be zero and the virtual monitor here is gonna be one. When we do this later, we're gonna see a case where we do it to zero. If it doesn't work for you, always try zero, one, maybe two, because you'll find out which one it is in the end. So we set that, very simple. And then we just type here, export display, so that, that variable is now available to other programs. And it's simple as this, if we now type leafpad, a notepad that you get with GNOME, now I'm running on dot .11 here, but this desktop here is dot .44, look at that, up comes my uh, little, my little um, notepad here. In fact, what we can do is if we go into the background here, if we do an ls, here are some files. Now, if we do touch, this is um, dot 11 dot text, there we go, okay. So that's on the dot 11 machine. If we go over to here now and say open, we can see that under, there it is, there's that file, this is dot 11. Okay, but if I was to actually uh, log out of here now, or open up another window, it's better to say, on the original one, that, that file isn't there. This is Pi 1. That is definitely uh, a thing, but this is not the Pi there. So what I've shown is that I'm actually running this program on one Pi and having it displayed on the other. Now, of course, I can run web browsers, I can run in development environments, I can run another terminal, I can do anything. I'm now using two Pis, one as a display and one actually to power, the, to actually run the program. Now, I said there's two ways to do it. If we disconnect from here, we're now back on our original uh, Pi. If we just do show the address here, .44, there it is, so we're now back on our first Pi, the one here with the desktop. Now, rather than setting all that display stuff, another thing you can do is you can say secure shell, as we did a minute ago, but if you include minus Y, Pi at 192.168.1.11, what the y, is my say, y minus Y sorry, says is that you can, using secure shell, it wants to send any X traffic, any of that window traffic over this same connection. So then we don't need to set up all that stuff with display and everything, it's automatically already done. So now again, here I am on that other machine, I've just secured shelling, but if I straight away type leaf pad, it comes up here. So again, I'm now connecting to a, a running a program here. If we had open, we'll see that file, there it is. Uh, pi, this is dot 11. Okay, it's a different different Pi. And just by connecting to it with a minus Y parameter means that any program, any GUI program that I run will automatically be displayed on the, on the other desktop, on this other machine. So that's a really easy way to connect. Okay, so the next thing we want to try is can we go from the Pi back to Windows? Now, to be able to go from the Pi to Windows, you're going to need an X server, a thing that understands the X protocol and all the libraries and all that, uh, for Windows, because Windows doesn't come with it by default, and you can use VCXServe, Windows Server, and I'll leave a link in the description below. It's on SourceForge, and it's a really easy program to install. You literally just download it, run the program, next, 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 whatever, and it just installs. And it's really, really simple to install, not very complicated, okay? And it's uh, open source, okay? And it's here available for free from the SourceForge website. Once it's then installed, you then need to run a program, which, it, it, which comes with it, called xlaunch. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna type xlaunch, and it basically says, how do you want to run your X server? 
We'll have multiple windows, that's the easiest one. Let the display be set automatically, okay? Uh, don't start any actual particular programs. Uh, and I'm just gonna tick here, disable access control. Again, just makes the demo easier rather than worrying about who and who can't connect. And that's it. So now it's actually running and you don't see anything. Actually, it's down here. And if you go down to your the clock, you can see that there'll be an icon running down there. Okay, so now let's go back to uh, our Raspberry Pi. Now to connect to our Raspberry Pi, I'm going to use the Putty program, which is a secure shell uh, program that you can get for Windows. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you've not used it before how to install it. Very, very simple to install. Again, a standard Windows program. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our Raspberry Pi. Remember, 192.168.1.11. Okay, so we put the address in there. But we have to do one thing. If you go down here in this left-hand menu to SSH, and then to X11, we want to say enable that X forwarding, which means I want all that traffic that allows you to send uh, the, the X11 uh, protocols over this secure shell. And so we click on open, and then a window pops up, which allows us to log into Pi and type in that password. So here we are, I've just connected through now to a Pi, and if I now type in LeafPad, that notebook program, look what happens it comes up on Windows. So look, there we go. There's a terminal and this here is a Windows, a, a Linux program running under that Linux, uh, that Raspberry Pi and it's come through here to my Windows uh, desktop. And if I look here under the Pi desktop, this is .11. So I'm actually running now a program on my Raspberry Pi but rather than having to use VNC to connect through to the desktop, I'm actually getting it over X11. This is working over it is in, in big capital letters to shout x11 forwarding look at that so you could do this for anything you can start chrome you can start whatever you want and you can actually have uh, raspberry pi in fact this works for any linux server not just raspberry pi any linux server coming up on your desktop which means you can have multiple windows open some are open on the actual native machine your windows machine and some are open on other devices in fact this is how i've been doing my computing ever since uh, you know i was working uh, at deck Digital Equipment Corporation with Vaxes and Ultrix and Unix many, many, many moons ago. This is how we did it all because it was all distributed uh, computing in the sense it was client server computing all the different nodes that you were using, all the different computers you were using were all over the place on the network. So there we go. So we can exit out of that. Uh, and so now the next thing that we want to do is to see how we can actually get a uh, Windows subsystem for Linux to display programs uh, like that. Okay, so here is my Windows subsystem for Linux running. Uh, this is the terminal that gives me access to Ubuntu here. And if we do, for example, a cat of slash etc slash OS release, it says this is uh, uh, Ubuntu 18.04 long term support. Now, previously, before I've done this, I've actually installed LeafPad, and you do that using apt get install LeafPad. Very, very standard command for. Uh, for Unix, for Linux, sorry, for Ubuntu. And what we do is we do as we did on that very first uh, Raspberry Pi board, we set the display. So we don't need to use secure shell because we're already, this is on this Windows machine. So we say so display is equal to 127.0.0.1. That's the local IP address. And now on zero, colon zero, not colon one. We used colon one before because it was that VNC. This is the physical monitor we're connected to. Now, by the way, if you want a video on these addresses, 127.0.0.1 and 192.168.1. whatever, let me know in the comments because I'll make a video about these special IP addresses that we often use in our homes and our home networks. Okay, so we set the display and then we just do that export display exactly as we did on the Raspberry Pi, but now we're using uh, Ubuntu as part of the Windows subsystem for Linux. And that's it, we now type LeafPad. And there it is, up it comes. I am now running LeafPad on my Windows machine. And it, there you go, there's a text file I'd already created. This is wsl.txt. And if we uh, just put that into the background there and do an ls, there you go, this is, uh, uh, this is wsl.txt. So using my uh, Ubuntu Windows uh, subsystem for Linux, I've got LeafPad and it's now running here. And of course, again, you can run any GUI program that you can get for uh, Linux for Ubuntu that runs under WSL, you can get it displaying here on your Windows desktop. All because of that uh, VCX serve that I showed you and you just download it and install it and it's very, very simple as that.
Okay, that's it. Okay, so there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed the power there that X11 gives you for displaying programs all over the place. Now there is another step that could be taken with a WSL and that's to run a full uh, desktop over this kind of X11 protocol. I didn't show you that because actually I don't think there's any point in booting up a Windows machine and then using it and then having a second desktop. It's much more powerful to have individual apps pop up integrated into your existing desktop. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to check out the new Speed Test G channel, which also has a Twitter account, Speed Test underbar G. And I suppose that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.